Whether you're picking and grinning or just picking or just grinning, grab a drink, pull up a seat. It's time for Roots Music Rambler. Turn it up. So I bought uh, for my shiny forehead. Yeah. I bought I bought makeup, but I don't have I don't have the spongy thing to put it on. So sponge or a brush? Well, either I don't know. <laughs> you tell me. You have this a teenage is, daughter. Well, and yeah, a but, girlfriend. Yeah, well, I know, but see if I put I put that up here and then I gotta smear it in. So it's yeah. You so have anyway. to blend. It uh, has to blend. Yeah, so I'm not I'm not gonna do that much uh, right now because. Um, I'll just have a shiny forehead. How about that? That works. So, for those of you who are watching on the YouTubes, I have a shiny forehead, but I'm trying to address the situation with makeup and the women in my life um, haven't been well. Katie's been helpful. Katie told me what I needed, but okay. but I haven't. She had. We were going to go to Walgreens together one day, and she was going to go in and buy me what I wanted or but what I needed, and it didn't happen. I can't remember why, but probably because we got distracted and did something else. But whatever. So, there we go. I'm trying to work on my shiny forehead. Is my forehead shiny? <clears throat> um, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. No, the only thing that's shiny for you is if you look up too much, your light glares in your glasses. But turn your head the other way. No, the other way. Now look up. Okay. Yeah. Well, no, that's a TV or something. See, see, see the ring. I can write it. Go back. Oh ah. yeah, there it is. Ah. Yeah. Now you got Devo eyeballs. <laughs> I'm sure this is super entertaining for the people listening on the audio version of the podcast. So sorry about that. They don't that, see our shenanigans. We we start the we st- you, that's why you should go watch it on YouTube uh, or the website rootsmusicrambler.com. We start the show off uh, each week just just talking about whatever, and uh, obviously th- this one was not as entertaining <laughs> for people who were listening Shiny as, as it was for people who were uh, you know watching on the old YouTube versions of the show. Um, well, well, we we're, we're, this is our fourth episode. Uh, we're four in, uh, we've had, uh, uh, JD Shelburne and we've had Cindy Imch and we've had, uh, Mike Mintz so far. Correct. Pretty, pretty interesting mix of people. Well, how pretty do you think, the sh- how do you, how do you think the show's going so far, Frank? Well, um, I think it's going great. I mean, just based on my own experience, I'm having a ball. Oh, um, and the feedback I've gotten um, has been all positive. And I have friends that text me and are like, you know, when's the next episode? And, um, <laughs> Good. you know, and then a couple of uh, people that I know have left reviews and comments on the YouTube videos. So that's always nice. Um, <laughs> but, you know, this is my... I mean, I know I started the podcast on my own, you know, before COVID, um, and it wasn't anything like this, right? This is very professional, <laughs> and, um, you know, it was just me and, like, a microphone and my computer, um, but it's just, it's taken some getting used to, and um, I've not really ever been a fan of my own voice. I feel like I sound like a, a 12-year-old. Um, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so... You know, and I had a career for 20 years that required me to talk over a radio. So, um, but, you know, whatever. Um, I think I've gotten over it. And it's probably because I'm talking about stuff that I love and stuff that I get really excited about. And, you know, with a partner that shares that same affinity, same, you know, love of music and just fun just good times um so yeah i think it's been going well i'm having fun yeah Yeah. we've gotten great feedback and um our guests have uh they seem to have enjoyed it yeah you know i mean we've gotten really good feedback from them as well so yeah yeah, what about you i'm 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 absolutely loving it it's the first podcast i've ever done 
that, well, not ever done. I did a short lived one for a while to just play around and see if I could do one back, you know, before I started actually doing podcasts. But it's the first podcast I've ever done that wasn't like marketing related because my day job's in the marketing world. And, and right. I can, I talk about that stuff all the time. So this is different for me. It's something more of a hobby, more of an interest, more fun for me. And so I yeah. get really excited about it. And I've always had an allergy to, really long podcasts and our yeah. podcast has been really long, but it's because we're having so much fun and the conversations are so rich and interesting. And I just don't want to cut that. anything out. You know, it's all good. Yeah. yeah. So I'm having a lot of fun doing it now, good. but I, I have to ask though, what did you do for 20 years that you talked into a radio? I was a 911 police dispatcher. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. You didn't. I did not know that. No. I, I was. I think I was still working that job when we met, however many years ago. Well, if you told me that, I the, the night I met you, I was really drunk, so um, Gee, I'm sure I wouldn't Gee. have remembered it. <laughs> we so, did bond over bourbon. Um, we did. Yeah. We did. Um. Yeah. I. Yeah. I was a nine one one police dispatcher. <laughs> um. Here in Chicago. Wow. And I did that for twenty years. Um. It was a job I took and I was going to do for one year um, because, mm. you know, I was just, well, I was out of college for like two years at that point. And my dad was a Chicago cop and um, he's like, you're, they're hiring dispatchers and mm -hmm. you're done with college. Now you have your degree. You need to get a real job and <laughs> you're going to go take the test and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, no, nice. but I did. And because, you know, I can't disappoint my dad. Um I took the job and 20 years later, but wow. it was great. I mean, like I met some awesome people, made great friends, um, you know, and because I started it so young, mm -hmm. you know, I left the job with 20 years and in just a couple more years, I get to collect a pension. There so, you go. That's yeah. awesome. So, you know, it worked out and yeah. I mean, you know, it, it gave me a lot of opportunities um, and it supported my family for a long time. Sure. Well, I mean, and it's a noble work for sure. Um, yeah. One of my really good friends from college uh, who was in a lot of my radio TV classes at Moorhead State University, my undergraduate degree, uh, his name is Kevin uh, Owens, and he's been a 911 dispatcher in Lexington, Kentucky um, since shortly after graduation. It wasn't okay. right after graduation that he got the job. He's been there for a while. And uh, so he does it. And I've talked to him about it a couple of times. And it's it's certainly can be thick and heavy work, uh, and yeah. it's certainly uh, a great service to the community. So uh, hats off. Thank you for your service on behalf of the people of Chicago, even though I'm not one of them. So, oh, you got a little Tyler Childers koozie there. I like that. Yes, this that's is, good. I mean, probably considered vintage now. Yeah, that's definitely vintage from the, yeah, from that album. Country Squire, and yeah. that's one of the songs on the album as well. I, I have considered uh, the the image you have on your koozie uh as my next tattoo that would be fun um you know tyler's looking all crazy <laughs> well my other option is um just a strip of the eyes of hannibal lecter that that would be another one that i would consider okay i love silence of the lambs i love that movie so oh my gosh i do too it's fantastic but yeah. hannibal lecter's scary <laughs> well some people think i'm scary so there you go Okay. Welcome to Roots Music Rambler. She's Frank. He's Falls. And we're rambling on through the stories behind the music we love. Today on the show, we have a special show for you. Um, and it's, uh, thankfully for all of you, it's a show where I, I'm not involved. I'm just <laughs> going to sit here and, and listen with everybody else. Because, uh, Frank, tell us, tell us who you're talking to and, and how this thing all happened. So, um, our guest today um is jay gonzalez of the band drive by truckers Woo! um he's a multi-instrumentalist he plays keys for the truckers and guitar and he's just so creative and such a cool guy i've met him a couple of times and he's always very gracious you know um, willing to talk take pictures the last time before not this last time when I interviewed him, but the time before that, when I saw him, I just happened to be texting my daughter at the same time. And um, she's like, well, ask him like how he, what pr his process is for the songwriting. And so I did. And he said, you know, it, it's not 
as in depth as you would think, you know, um, and Jay does a lot of solo work. He's got a new album coming out. So mm-hmm. he does write songs. Um, but yeah, he's just, he's just a good guy and he's always willing to chat. And this, uh, interview came about, um, because of my wonderful husband, um, who I mentioned earlier. And he is, he's been friends with Jay for a while now, uh, just cool. from going to trucker shows for the last 20 years. Uh, he and Jay got to be friends. And typically when we go see the truckers, Tom, my husband will send Jay a message and be like, Hey, you want to meet up before the show, get a bite, have a drink, whatever. And usually Jay is down. Um, so when we saw them, when we went down to Bloomington, Illinois to see them, uh, Tom Mm -hmm. sent Jay a message and was like, Hey, you know, Francesca's got this podcast. Do you want to be on it? Da da da. And Jay was all for it. Um, so before the show in Bloomington, Jay met us, uh, out at a pub in (laughs) Bloomington and, uh, it was just me, Jay and my iPhone. Mm -hmm. And I recorded this interview. We were sitting outside, people were walking by, buses were driving past. Um, (laughs) you can hear them for sure. (laughs) Yeah. So, you know, it's not going to be like the really polished studio (laughs) type podcast, but it's Jay and, uh, he's a really great storyteller too, and it was a lot of fun to talk to him. And I think he had fun too, so I'm excited. Yeah, it's it, I, I've obviously listened to the the whole thing to just prepare for our conversation. And the the I thought the background noise is the buses pulling up and people walking by. I thought it was hysterical. I thought it made it really a really genuine interview. And as Francesca said, it's just her on her iPhone and it's just audio. So what I'm going to do or what we're going to do for those of you who are watching on YouTube. Uh, fortunately, Jay has some great pictures of himself on his website, and I was able to pull them down. So I'll just do a little like slideshow photo montage. So you got something to look at if you're on the YouTube's, uh, but it's it's definitely an audio only interview. But um, I I can't tell you how um, uh, thankful I am and grateful I am for Tom and his relationship because we're on episode four and we got a fucking drive by trucker on our show right. which is incredible so i mean that major crud right there yeah for for sure and i'm just glad it wasn't no no offense because i know we want him on the show i'm just glad it wasn't uh patterson hood because i've been working on an impersonation of him and i would be tempted to do it in front of him and i'm not going to do it in front of him until i'm a little bit more polished so or there you go. drunk yeah, I've drunk would probably be the 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 synonym for what po- meant by uh, by polished for sure <laughs> <laughs> so a Patterson hood imitation. Like I can't even imagine. Yeah. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do it yet. I'm just going to, I'm going to, I'm going to dangle, I'm going to dangle that out there for everybody to just chew on. And at some point in the future on the show, I will do a Patterson hood impersonation. I just started working on it though. So it's not, it's not good. All right. All right. And I can't, I can't just get into it. Like I got to listen to him a little bit before I get into it. But I can do some impersonations, but I can't quite do him justice yet. So All right. we'll we'll leave that out there as a teaser. Maybe by like <laughs> episode six. Um, uh, sixteen, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. But anyway, so uh, I don't know what the hell we're sitting here uh, shooting the shit for. Uh, we need to get out of here so that we can take our break and then bring back uh, your your fantastic interview with Jay Gonzalez. Uh, before we do though, uh, we, we, uh, we're going, I'm, I'm obviously sipping on a bourbon. I just got it in a tall glass with some soda. I'm mixing it tonight so I don't get too hammered. And, uh, she's got her Tyler Childers, uh, koozie wrapped around. What is that? This is like probably my favorite beer ever. It's oh, called okay. Happy Place and it's by, uh, Third Space Brewery, which is in Milwaukee. Okay. Um, I first went to Third Space like six years ago and did a brewery tour and fell in love with this beer. Okay. So, um, it's, I, we can't get it in Illinois. So whenever we cross the border, um, I'm sure to get some to bring it home. Very nice. That's what we used to do with weed in Kentucky, but anyway, oh. um, and, uh, and they're not a sponsor that I just wanted to know what kind of beer she was drinking. We do have a sponsor. Although they or, would, they, they'd yeah. be a great sponsor. Well, I mean, I drink call, enough of their beer. Let's call them and t- they right. can send me some, I'll drink beer on the show. I don't give a shit. All right, cool. Um, so, yeah, let's do that. Uh, but we do want, before we go to break, we do want to remind you that uh, this lovely uh, flannel over here is a muskox flannel. 
And uh, we're an affiliate. They're a sponsor of the show by way of our affiliate relationship with them. And um, Musk Ox is a premium flannel shirt. It's fall. Go out and get you one. It's uh, gomuskox.com slash rambler and then when you use the code rambler you get a discount and uh, uh ten dollars uh, of every hundred dollar purchase uh goes to uh wildlife conservation uh that uh, they go they they donate to the alaska wildlife conservation center that is an actual musk ox that's that's what they look like they're kind of a hybrid between a, a an ox or a bull and a goat they're big and they're up in the in the, in the alaskas so we want to we want to preserve those. They don't look like they need protecting. They look like they can protect themselves, but eh, well, you know how that goes. Wildlife yeah. conservation is important. So go muskox.com slash rambler. Use the code rambler. And uh, this is Rich Music Rambler. Welcome back to Roots Music Rambler. As promised, this is a special episode. Francesca in Bloomington, Indiana. No, Bloomington, Illinois. Illinois. Bloomington, Illinois. Sorry. Uh, In Bloomington, Illinois. Outside a bar and apparently across the street from the bus station, (laughs) interviewed Jay Gonzalez from the Drive-By Truckers. Roll it! This is Francesca. I'm in Bloomington, Illinois, sitting outside a bar slash pub, whatever. Rosie's, Rosie's in Bloomington. And I'm here with Jay Gonzalez, the multi-instrumentalist of Drive-By Truckers. Um, so I'm going to talk to Jay for just a couple minutes. He's got to get back to the theater. We're seeing them tonight, um, along with American Aquarium, who I'm so excited to see. I've only They're seen great. BJ um, Solo. solo. Yeah. So yeah, I'm excited amazing. to see them and talk about Roots. Mm-hmm. So the last album of theirs, Chicka McConaughey. Mm-hmm. Um, I've actually been to Chickamaconico in North Carolina, um, and that was before the album came out. So when I saw the name of it and the song, I'm like, I've been there. So, you know, I was really excited to have this connection. So Jay um, very graciously offered some time, some of his time so we can talk about where he's come from, his roots, and um, kind of what his inspirations are, solo and um, perhaps a little bit with the truckers. So we were just having a little conversation off air about um, what roots music can really encompass. It's not s- specific to like, it, it doesn't have to be pigeonholed. It doesn't have to fit inside a box necessarily. I was mentioning the band, the Hue from Mongolia. They're a metal band, but they play traditional Mongolian instruments. So to us, that is roots music. And so Jay, you were about to share your thoughts on that. Would you mind? No, not at all. Not at all. Um, I, I think just in the definition of roots, it's, you know, what it, wherever you're, you're, you your musical roots come from, um, which can be, you know, um, in the Americana genre, you know, either from Appalachia or the South or, you know, or, or Bakersfield or wherever. But, but, um, but uh, it's also, you know, some, some folks roots are in Tin Pan Alley. Some folks roots are, it's, 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 I don't know. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a pretty broad term in particular in other countries, you know, it's, it's uh like we were saying with that band, the Hue, like bringing in, you know, I think a, a lot of times as a, as a, as a teenager, whenever you start playing music, you play whatever is on the, the hit parade, which is no one says hit parade anymore, but you know, <laughs> top 40 or whatever. And, and is popular at the time. And then as you get older, you work your own, I think as you feel more comfortable um, as a musician or whatever, you you work your own sense of place in, um, into the music. And, um, you know, I mean, it's weird. Cause I'm a you know, I've lived in the South uh, longer than I have in the North, but I'm from New York originally and being in the Chuckers, so it was it was a little, you know, strange, I think, for some people to have to, that, that I was with, with, with a band with such a sense of place and in, in the South and Alabama and in Georgia. Um, but it but it, it it's the more you play with different people from different areas, you realize that it's all it's all the same and we actually share a lot of similar uh, influences you know um uh both from that area and from you know i mean really rock and roll is all based in the south and, and so um you know it's it, that's, that's so yeah. speaking of inspirations who would you say is or are your biggest inspirations 
Uh, it's tough. I mean, I have so many, but the, the basic, I think the big influences for me have been uh, <laughs> both sort of the British, the British take on the American music, the British invasion stuff. And so, you know, the, uh, in particular, early to mid um, Beatles and Stones and Kinks and, and, and that, but, but then having, getting into that, going back, realizing you know where they were listening to and listen to you know buddy holly and all the all the um the roots you know the roots of a rock and roll which you know get to get back to that but um that and then also sort of like you know i grew up in the 80s and, and late 70s so a lot of um again top 40 from that at that era and stuff but um a lot of piano you know sort of keyboard piano based stuff and then uh as i got a little older i started playing guitar and and then really got into you know, sort of hard rock, the classic rock, Zeppelin and stuff, but then also... Um, so you mentioned the keyboard. You play yeah. key, You play keys, mm-hmm. right? Um, so was that your first instrument or...? Yeah, yeah the first, uh, that was, I took piano lessons when I was seven years old. Um, my mom took me into uh, Caldo, or was the name of the department store. It was kind of like Walgreens or, okay. or you know, or, or uh, no, like a Woolworths or Woolworths. Just a, very much. Yeah. I'm old enough to remember yeah, Woolworths. I was say, I don't know. So Caldor is the local version of that. And she walked me in and I distinctly remember her taking me to the record. She was going to buy me my first record. And and I remember being I was a, I'm still a little guy, but I was a very little guy. And walking up to the the there was a, a record on the on, on the little stand. And it was a guy uh, wearing a motorcycle jacket throw about to throw a rock at a glass house and from the back and it's billy joel glass houses his uh you know this is a guy who was you know ja- a jazzy tin pan alley songwriter singer songwriter uh sh- schmaltzy piano guy <laughs> who like decided to make a, a rock you know a new wave album and that but you know when you're seven years old and you see a, someone about to throw a rock at a glass house you know, I think I was the target audience, so I, I I bought that as my first record, and and that and it really, I could probably trace all my influences back to that because he is the kind of guy who hops genres and sort sure. of copies different genres. He's more of a writer than a than a, a you know a, a, a unique stylist. You know, he kind of and you know there's uh, you may be right as the Stones, and then you know there's there's a there's a Beatles. There's all these pastiches on there, but that's kind of how I learned from you know being a seven year old. And I took pian- my long story long <laughs> took piano lessons because of that. And oh, uh, my teacher was I love it. She would let me you know if I played the Beethoven and and whatever, then I could do the you know beginner Billy Joel songs and uh, and then you know Elton John and and uh, all the, the 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 usual suspects. But then uh, I quit to do karate, and then I didn't do that well, so I moved to a uh, guitar. And, and then after that was all hard rock stuff from then on in. And um, anyway, that's it. Yeah, so it's it's just this, you know, I play guitar and keyboards and that's kind of the, the, the yin and yang of it is to do both of them, you know. So I have to say, I've seen Drive By Truckers live, I don't even know how many times now, I've lost count. Um, but it, one of my favorite things in the show is, is watching you with the guitar strapped across your body and then playing the keyboard. Um, so that that's great. And then, you know, if need be, you just kind of swing the guitar around and start playing, go back to the keys. And for me, who has trouble, you know, like I have trouble just like, you know, I don't know, getting one chord right on a guitar. It's pretty impressive. Um, So you said you're originally from New York. Okay. So is there or has there been any sort of influence on your music, the path you've taken um, based on where it is that you're from or that you grew up or places you've lived? Well, you know, I I didn't used to think so. I used to be a little, a particular move in Georgia. Um, You know, I was, I, I grew up, about in a, in, a, in a hamlet called Shenorock, which is about an hour north of New York City. So it was always like the city, and then we were somewhere in a way, you know, pretty far into the suburbs. And I never really thought there was any sort of sense of, I really felt like I didn't have a sense of place for a long time. But then, um, you know, after I left is when I realized it, that, that, you know, a lot, a lot of my friends moved to, um, the Hudson Valley into Woodstock area and that and really that's we were like a hop skip and a jump from that area so really the, there was a lot there you know it's maybe not directly 
you know, in Westchester County, where I grew up, there wasn't, you know, there were bands. There was like, like Twisted Sister played around there. There was a guy named Richie Scarlett who played around there, and and I'm sure other bands from the New York tri-state area played in Westchester, but there wasn't like so and so came from this area like there is in sort of you know Athens or sure. or you know the Pat- Patterson and Cooley grown up in the Shoals. There's, there was no direct. But you're close enough to the city where that probably logically would have would have been where I would have moved to if if we didn't move to Georgia um, on kind of a whim. So, and is that how you got? Yeah, involved with drive by truckers. Yeah, I went. I went. I went to a college, a, a state school in up in Western New York called SUNY Fredonia, and met my friends. And we had a band called Love Apple, and we all moved one by one down to Georgia after we graduated. Um, and and then four or three out of four of us stayed down are still down there so you know we we just all just are totally just changed our life path you know to do that and um you know we're all still doing music and it's it's a, and, and it's and so yeah i moved there in 95 and and the and the trucker started in 96 and you know i knew patterson from the hi-hat club where he he would we would see the first incarnation of the truckers play and and uh and he would do sound for the for the love apple and we'd talk about you know oh the truckers were going up to buffalo and that's nearby and you know we would talk about that's where we were, were from you know so it's um yeah it was it was it was an interesting thing and then and then they kind of disappeared and blew up you know it was yeah. a weird <laughs> thing where we knew them and then and then they were one of the few bands that actually toured you know most people in athens and in, in our circle kind of would just stay around and not tour and then and then consequently no one would ever hear of you you know so um you know so yeah so and then and then in 2008 he uh asked me to you know because they had did a re- done a record with um spooner olden playing keyboards and and spooner couldn't tour anymore so he asked me to play and then that's yeah 15 years later you know so 15 years so i it wasn't long after what 96 that i first heard of drive by truckers Uh and um I can't say, like, I'm not going to pretend that I was, like, number one fan from the beginning. Mm-hmm. Uh, but music wasn't as accessible mm-hmm. back then as it is now. So it was, a, it, it took some effort to try to find um, music to listen to. Sure. But they were on my radar and um, I'd heard some songs. Funny, fun fact, yeah. the first trucker song I ever heard was <laughs> Zoloft. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I'm like, these are my people. We'll have more with Francesca's great conversation with Jay Gonzalez from the Drive-By Truckers after the break. This is Roots Music Rambler. Welcome back to Roots Music Rambler. Time for the second half of Francesca's conversation with Jay Gonzalez from the Drive-By Truckers. Roll it. So in addition to playing with drive by truckers though, Jay, you have your you have a solo career. Sure. Okay, career. so and I know career is in quotation marks, yeah. <laughs> um Endeavor project. Yeah, yeah project. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so um but you have a new album. Okay, so you wanna tell us about that? I'd love to. Yeah, that's it actually the single came out a couple of days ago and um and uh, it's it's a little harder to find because it's under uh, I, it's a collaboration with a, a lyricist friend of mine named Pete Smith. So the project is called Gonzalez Smith. And Gonzalez is basically Smith in Spanish. So Gonzalez Smith is, is, our, is our for real. Yeah, I mean it's very common in the sense okay. that Smith is. I don't know if it. I don't think it translates okay. necessarily. But but so Gonzalez Smith is our project, and we um and uh, and it's uh, songs that he wrote all the lyrics for, and I wrote all the music for. And uh, we just released it on a Spanish label, Bobo Integral, and and it's uh, the single came out um, a couple of days ago, and and, and it's uh, out on December first. So yeah, I'm excited. Uh, okay, now I'm intrigued. Yeah. Um, is it so a Spanish label? Uh, well, a la- label in Spain who I, I had reached out to, and they are they tend to specify like um, specialize rather in um, like jangle pop and power pop, similar genres that I kind of my music my solo music is and uh and uh so they just i had sent him what we were doing and he seemed interested ironically the owner of the label's name is gonzalo <laughs> so gonzalo is going to put gonzalo smith out and uh it's awesome and uh, i'm very excited and you know this is a guy uh it's a it's an interesting story um 
if you have a minute, it's a, it's a. I have minutes, Jay. I have minutes. <laughs> it's a he. So the 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 lyricist friend of mine I met through um, several people is a weird sort of a co- coalescence of of different folks I know were, f- were mutual friends with him. But Pete Smith uh, is the father of Nora Smith, and she she's a real talented wonderful uh, she works uh, a showrunner for for bob's burgers an animated show oh, and okay. so so and he and pete i met when we we went met with uh with nora and her husband and and pete and his wife pat were there and uh in athens at the the lovely uh, manhattan bar i don't know if you've ever been but it's a nice sad fact i've bar. not been to athens <laughs> all right well it, it, when you come go to the man <laughs> the manhattan bar is amazing and okay. uh and um and we met and talked about our similar uh, influences, Randy Newman, Harry Nilsson, and a lot of stuff. And then uh, we kept in touch and talked. And and and, and as, as it was leaving, his daughter Nora said, oh, you need to listen to his album. And I was like, you know, what? As everybody has an album, you know? I was like, maybe, maybe put out a CD of his songs or something and recorded himself or something. But it was like, I looked it up and it was, he put out an album with this, um, in 1971 uh where he wrote all the lyrics and this guy uh gary mcfarland who's like a jazz genius guy who was a, he was a, a vibes player and he played on all kinds of amazing uh projects with different you know bossa nova people anyway he wanted to make sort of a a pop album he was the first guy to take beatles songs and do do beatles songs and sort of a bossa nova and, okay. and slash like you know sort of a a Brazilian kind of way as well, and and, and jazzy versus. Anyway, he's twenty one or thereabouts, and did an album, and then uh, that was the last album he made. And I love it. It's called Butterscotch Rum, and it's an amazing record. And then we hung out, and I just would rave about the album, and he had kind of, um, you know, sort of that was another lifetime for him. So sure. we didn't want to talk about it. And then we would, and then eventually he heard one of my earlier albums, and the lyrics were pretty dark and he said he felt worried about me so he wrote a silly song called Helen Magellan about a lady who travels the world and and uh gets gets cut up into pieces and uh you know it's like a real dark funny silly thing he also I should mention uh worked um on uh the um Space Goes Coast to Coast program on Adult Swim and he created the Brack show which would be sort of real gonzo wild they took old footage from Hanna Barbara TV shows from the '60s, but dubbed in silly voices and okay. stuff, and, and interviewed people, and um, it's very, it's, it's very great. <laughs> so he's he's a he, he's a television producer, and anyway, we wrote 40 songs. Oh wow! And uh, we put it, and I whittled them down, and we put this album. On, so yeah. Wow, yeah. that is yeah, it's really like, interesting. It's very much, um, how Elton John and Bernie Taupin worked. It was like, you know, just sends the lyrics a PDF, and then I set them, and then we hone it down, and then move to the next one, and. It's a, uh, it's to me, it's it's, it's a, a joy. It's an ideal way to sure. work, you know. That sounds like a lot of fun. It wow, is, it is. It's a lost art, you know. I mean, it's not lost art, but I mean, a lot of people write, you know. Now it's like <laughs> singer songwriters. One person does both, and that's great. But usually, it takes a lot of. Um, it's rare when someone could do both really, sure. really, really well, you know. <laughs> um, so it's nice. To- it, with a little help from your friends. Exactly. Exactly. And 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 and, it's, <laughs> and, it, and I'm so happy to get this out there you know um eventually eventually in december. and in december okay december, yeah. okay um so last thing because i know yeah. you got to get back yeah. um my partner jason and i on the show we do um a thing called picking the grinning mm-hmm. where we talk about what we're listening to right now sure. um what we're really liking and currently uh, I last night I went to a show by myself in Chicago. Oh. I went to see a young lady named Joby Riccio. Okay. I don't know if you've heard of her. She is fantastic, delightful young lady. And I say that like I'm 80, but I could probably be her mother. <laughs> right, right, right. She is um, such a talented songwriter. She won the John Prine Fellowship oh, wow. Award right. from Newport Folk. Um, so she, I, I just, I had to go see her. Um, so I'm really into Joby Riccio right now. So that's my pick in the grin. And how about you? Oh man, it's tough. Uh, you know, it's not a new. It's, it no, doesn't have okay, to be new. It doesn't have to be new. Okay. Well, it's it's a friend of mine named Jordan Jordan Hudak who uh, had a band uh, called Marvelous Toy. Uh, he toured with uh, his other band, um, the Henry Clay People. He oh, yeah, toured yeah. with us with the Truckers. Anyway, but this is a side project, and uh, and I just kind of came back across it because in the video. 
this is a song probably from I guess but maybe 10 years ago now but it's called Waiting for the Fire and it's this great pop song and uh, I asked him if I could do a video for it and I filmed my my then you know five or six year old son in a fireman's outfit and running around and putting out fires and, oh. and my dog running around and everything and um and then recently my son who's now 17 is and it has a girlfriend like we were we were thought it was pretty awesome to show him the show show her his the video of him as a kid and uh we just came up with this idea we haven't done it yet and i know it'll embarrass the hell out of him but uh but i'm we're still gonna do it and um it's just a great pop song and it's just proof that so many so much music is out there that you don't you know you don't know how it, it's 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 uh, it should you know an, an alternate. A lot of it'd be a number one hit, you know. It's, right, like a lot of talented people out there who may not fall in the genres that we yeah. prefer. So yeah. tell us again the name of the song yeah. and the artist. It's uh, it's uh, his group is called Marvelous Toy, and it's and the song is called Waiting for the Fire. Okay, and uh, maybe we could share a link or something like that. Absolutely, so, okay. absolutely, yeah. we would definitely share that. And I haven't seen him in years, and I love that dude. And and it just <laughs> and it just kind of you know how things sort of resurface. You, sure. If you stick around long enough, you. Uh, you think like, oh, I haven't seen them in years. It's gone. But then it comes. It always, it, it it circles, always circles back. back yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah. So we'll look for him and maybe we can tag him when we yeah, when great. we when oh, we um, when this goes live. Yeah. OK, so Jay Gonzalez, Drive by Truckers. We are so excited. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah, absolutely. And to me, like I'm trying not to fangirl too much, but, you know, I do love Drive by Truckers. Um, so this is a real honor for me. So uh, thanks again, Jay. And I can't wait for the show tonight. Yeah, I'm super excited. It'll be fun. Thanks so much. Good luck with the podcast and everything. And I can't wait to hear it. OK, thank you. All right, take care. Wow, that was a great conversation, uh, Frank. Good job, and uh, that was just a, that was just, uh, it was awesome to hear his stories. Tickled to know more about his new album. Now I want to go out and get it. So I can't. I don't want to. I don't want to wait till December. But you know, it is what it is. So, but good yeah. job. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, and thank and, you, Jay, again. Um, like I said, he's always fun to talk to. He's such a creative guy. Yeah. That was fun. And I I love I love the bus stop across the street. That was awesome. <laughs> I don't know that there was actually like a bus stop or a bus station across the street. I think a bus was just going past. Certainly sounded like it. If you're gonna interview a member of the drive by truckers, what better way to do it than outside a pub with like shit going by? Like that just makes sense. So that was perfect. All right. That works. There we go. All right, uh, we're we're going to be back with the uh, the picking and grinning section uh, here in just a minute. Stay tuned. You're listening to Roots Music Rambler. Welcome back to Roots Music Rambler. We have reached the picking and grinnings section of the show. Thanks for sticking around for that. It's the section where uh, Frank and I talk about uh, which uh, people uh, that we're picking uh, that are making us grinning or something like that. So, uh, you know, music we're listening to, what's making us, uh, what's making us smile, what's making us happy, what new artists have we seen and heard and all that good stuff. So, um, Frank. Jay. I know you you've been to a couple of shows recently that we've talked about, but who who are you listening to? What are you exploring these days? Um honestly, this last week I was on a real big Zach Bryan kick. Mm-hmm. Um I mean I really like Zach Bryan. Um and I've been paying a lot more attention to his newest album. And uh I just I don't know. I don't know what it is. Um his songs, I, like, I don't want to insult him. Like, they're not overly, um, like, deep. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? They're sure. just kind of, they're they're just, they're just good songs. And yeah. I think his voice is so unpolished that it just makes it more relatable. Yeah. Um, and his last album, there's a couple of really good ones that I, I really, really dig. Um, Overtime is good. Ticking. And I love, love, love Holy Roller, the duet that he did with Sierra Farrell. Mm-hmm. Um, if you don't know who Sierra is, you need to change that because she is wildly talented, gorgeous voice, and um, they sound so good together on that track. 
That's great. That's great. Well, and and uh, I I've I have been listening to a lot of Zach Bryan myself, um, and I kind of agree with you. His, his he 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 doesn't have a lot of like emotional depth. I don't guess in his songs is one way to put it. Um, but there's that's okay. Sometimes it's good right. to have something that's a little bit lighter that's still good, and there's still good emotion in it. He's got a good voice. I like the I like the fact, like you said, his voice is a little rough around the edges. But I mean, shed some of the best singers. I mean, fuck, Bob Dylan can't sing to you know save his life, but he's you know everybody loves listening to Bob Dylan tunes, right? right. So good stuff. So I've been I've been doing a couple of things uh, this this last week. First of all, I mean, kind of, it, and, and I'm not saying this because we had Jay Gonzalez on the show. Okay. I've been binging on Drive By Truckers um, because, as I mentioned on a previous episode. They're rather new to me. I've heard songs of theirs over the years, but I've never really gotten into them and gotten deep into them. Yeah. And I've been, do, I've been like watching old interviews on YouTube. I've been binging the albums. I've been watching live shows. So I've been like really going crazy with drive by truckers. I feel like I'm catching up. Um, and there's and a lot, there's good. a lot to catch up on. I mean, their catalog is deep. You know, yep. they've been around for a long time. But have you come across, uh, it's a video of um, 18 Wheels of Love when Patterson is telling the story about, you know, he wrote the song for his mama and he tells this giant story in the middle. I think the video is like 10 minutes long. Have you seen okay. that? I haven't seen it yet, but I, I'm now going to write that down and go look at it after we get done. Yeah, do it. I mean... <laughs> The way he tells the story, I mean, you know how I feel about Patterson, but um, I could listen to that on repeat. <laughs> it's just so good. It's just okay. so good. Yeah, I know how you feel about Patterson. That's how Karen feels about Patterson. So this guy's going to like take all the women away from me in my life, which is, you know. You can't typical. make me laugh. <laughs> Still have pneumonia. Yeah. Um, so, so drive my truckers. Oh, um. Nathan Graham, I'm wearing his T-shirt. Yep. Uh, well, not his T-shirt, but you know. Um, <laughs> just last night, he dropped a new single. It's called Right One. And, of course, it's fire. Um, okay. And, oh, the child and I are going to see Lovejoy. Yippee! Yay. Um, <laughs> we got tickets uh, in the presale. And there, there's the child. There's the child. Um, <laughs> and but it's not till December. but Okay. It's exciting nonetheless. Speaking of single, yeah, okay, what? Love Joy's new single. Love Joy right. has a new single. Normal people things is what it's called. Normal people things. It comes out at midnight today, technically, but it was released early on YouTube. <laughs> okay. Love Joy's new single. All right. Well, we'll go. To, we'll we'll find. We'll put a link to it in the show notes. It'd be great. Go go check out Love Joy. Speaking of of uh, children and concerts, uh, my daughter Katie. And her mother uh, went last night, the night we're recording this was the day before last night, she went to see uh, Noah Khan uh, in, uh, yeah. You hear yeah. my child? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Went to see Noah Khan in the Nash Vegas. So, Oh, wow. Lucky yeah. Katie. Yeah, <laughs> so I, I, I texted her. She, I, I texted her before the show. And I said, um, you know, have loads of fun tonight. Love you. And um, and then, you know, let me know how it goes. And I didn't hear back from her until um, this morning I woke up. I didn't hear back from her last night. I didn't hear anything from her this morning. And I knew they were getting up to come home. So I knew she was awake. I texted her this morning. Well, how was it? She texted me back at 542 p.m. <laughs> so. 10 hours later, she texted. Oh it was amazing. And that's all she said. So I got to call her and get more. She needs to be a little bit more descriptive than it was amazing. But apparently, Noah Khan show last night was amazing, according Maybe to Maybe she was just so exhausted and just like emotionally charged Probably. from the show that she just couldn't, you yeah. know, she couldn't. Well, I can't remember if it's Noah Khan or if it's some other artist, but my daughter has told me that at certain shows, all she does is cry. That's so real, actually. So there you go. All right. We have validation from another teenager. That, that's about. So maybe that's what she did last night. Maybe she was emotionally spent and didn't want to talk to her dad because Lord knows you need a lot of emotional energy to deal with me. So 
There you go. More facts. So another an artist that I've been uh, uh, that I've sort of discovered in the last couple of weeks, and I've been exploring a little bit, is a a newer uh, sort of Americana country artist called Cole Chaney. Uh, so oh, yeah, yeah. And and the one and honestly, the reason that I kind of discovered Cole Chaney, um, I I think I'd seen a couple of things on TikTok, and I kind of was familiar, but I'm, I've started to get into Cole Chaney a little bit more now. And the reason is because his fiddle player. Uh, is a young lady uh, named Ella Webster, and Ella we- and I've I've told a story on this show before about uh, Larry and Cheryl Webster, who were yeah. the the couple that I went to their house when I was a kid on Friday nights, and they had you know that was a picking and grinning session. They had all their friends come over with their instruments, and they would sit around and play music, and that's where I got a lot of my formative sort of foundational understanding and appreciation for mountain music and bluegrass and country. Well, Ella is their granddaughter and her dad, Mickey, and I have been friends since I was five or six years old. And I had no earthly idea that she even played an instrument and she is Cole Chaney's fiddle player. That's awesome. So so I'm going to work the connections uh, and hopefully get Ella on the show. But Heck then yeah. maybe Col- maybe Cole Chaney on the show. That'd be fun. Why not? And I also have confirmed, at least I have a verbal commitment, from Larry and Cheryl to be on the show. Yay! So I'm going to pack up the equipment and and uh, uh, wander into them their heels and uh, go to the Webster residence in Pike in the County. Holler? Uh, they don't. I don't think they live up a holler. Uh-huh. Um, I think they they live down on the riverbed. Um. But I'm gonna. They live off the four lane. I can I can put it in Eastern Kentucky terms. They live off the four lane there at Cole Run. Um, so uh, I'm gonna go interview them. I'm gonna go sit in their their living room. And she, when I when I talked to Cheryl and said I want to come and you know I'll come to your house and I'll record the show, and she said, Well, if Cole Cheney's band can rehearse in my kitchen, I guess you can do your podcast. I was like, Holy well, shit! Cole, Chaney, Cole Cheney's band rehearsed in there. Okay, cool. Let's go. So nice. Yeah. So it's it's. I that's, love Kentucky. Oh man, and it's, it's, everybody knows everybody. Uh, it's not that everybody's related. I know the jokes are out there. Oh, everybody's related. You know, the family tree only has one branch. Marry your sister. But everybody here seems to know everybody or knows somebody that knows you know somebody. Yeah. And uh, it just so happens, like I mean, I've never met Ella. I mean, her dad and I. I haven't seen or talked to him probably since i don't know freshman sophomore year college yeah um but our families have always been connected and you know i'm connected with them on facebook and stuff and i knew who ella was yeah no no, we're not we're not kin no 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 your kin his kin and your kin his kin and my kin yeah we we know each other we know each other uh so i knew who ella was i I had no earthly i didn't pay close enough attention to know that she was a musician and now she's a professional musician and is in uh cold chain's band so well, good for her. That's awesome. So that's my Cole, Cole Chaney is my new one, and and nice. Cole Chaney, well, Ella Webster vis a vis Cole Chaney, yeah, uh, is something that I've been digging into lately, and I'm excited nice. about potentially having them on the show too one one of these days. So. I love that. That's such a personal yeah. connection, and you know the spirit of the show, right? right? Your roots that that explains your roots in this type of music, your appreciation for it, it and look what it's become, right? Yeah. Well, and, so and, great. and I think I told Frank, I think I told you when we first started talking about the idea for this show. Yeah. I even said when we started talking about having guests on, I was like, I want to have Larry and Cheryl Webster yeah. on the show because I, I think I owe my music appreciation for this type of music to them. Yeah. Now, I, you know, I learned like, you know, Southern rock and classic rock from my stepdad and John Prine from my mom and my stepdad. So there were bits and pieces, but the my earliest musical memories are being at Larry and Cheryl Webster's house listening to people play bluegrass and Larry and Cheryl and their they had kind of a, a band and they still kind of get together every year. I, I, I may have mentioned this on the show before, but y- y'all are going to be excited in April because my hometown of Pikeville, Kentucky, um, has its annual little festival. All the little small towns have little festivals. Well, ours is called Hillbilly Days. I remember. And, Larry and Cheryl have always been in charge of the stage at the city park and running the musicians in and out of there and playing. And so uh, they've always had something to do with that. And their band plays there uh, every year. M- uh, they don't really have a band anymore, but they kind of get the gang back together and play on Hillbilly. Sure. Days. 
Can't so, get any rootsier than that. Oh no, hell no. And and we may I may actually just hire a camera crew and go film an episode at Hillbilly Days, just walking around talking to people because it is people watching to the nth degree. It's amazing. You gotta send me the dates. Maybe I need to come to Hillbilly Days. It's always the third weekend in April. It's a Friday, Saturday, yeah. Sunday. Actually, okay. like Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Uh, three day, you know, event. They close off the streets in downtown. There's little arts and crafts shops, and there's you can get funnel cakes, and you can get pies, and you know, you can, you know, get all your arts and crafts and quilts and stuff like that. And then, um, and then they have music in various places around downtown because Pikeville now it was wasn't like this when I was a kid, but Pikeville has an arena now. Um, and so there's always a big concert. Stapleton played one year and no kidding. You know, other people have played there. Uh, and then they have a stage outside of the arena where it's like more traditional mountain music and you've got, you know, people are out there, you know, clogging and shit and dancing in front of the oh, band. Yeah. And, and then the city park's got a big gazebo stage where there's, you know, other artists will go up in there. I think one year they even had a parking lot that was closed off and they had heavy metal bands. So it's, it's, it's a, it's a big eclectic mix of folks and it's really crazy. Love it. It's, it started in the late seventies as a fundraiser for Shriners Children's Hospital. Okay. And all of the booths and whatnot, the money went to, you know, some sort of donation to the Shriners. Uh, sure. The Shriners. And it's remained that as such. And okay. uh, it's been around for, I guess, 40, almost 50 years now, um, 45 years or so, because it started when I was probably six or seven. Okay. Um, so it's been around for for quite a while. And and I, I, I remember one year someone told me that during Hillbilly Days in Pikeville, Kentucky, which is a pop, the population of the town, the city limits is like seven or 8,000 people. Okay. During Hillbilly Days, there's like 150, 200,000 people come to town. So it's a big deal I'll for, that little, for that little place. But it's a lot yeah. of fun. Nice. We, should, we should plan on just going and doing a live remote uh, live stream from Hillbilly Days. Yeah, I'm going to have to look it up and get the dates and check my calendar. That yeah. might be... That might be uh, my spring break from school. So yeah, I've already, I've already, you know, I've already told Karen I'm taking you, and she's like, I can't wait. Like she's super excited, and you should be. I wasn't yeah. as excited about it when I was a kid because I thought, oh my god, all these right, people right, dressing up like rednecks and celebrating rednecks, and it wasn't really that. It was celebrating mountain culture. Yeah. And as I got older, I started to appreciate that more. And that but, seems to be a common story. Like when we're younger, we kind of reject our culture and heritage and, and i'm not saying it's true of everyone right. but you know and then as we get older we really try to hold on to those traditions and mm -hmm. get back in touch with our culture and our yep. roots and our traditions and um i know that's been my experience too so i think it's great and i think it's important that those stories and events and traditions are preserved you know, we don't know where we're going if we don't know where we came from, right? That's true. That's true. So, I've, I've said before, um, somewhat in relation to this show, but more so broadly, my relationship with music mm -hmm. and my family and whatnot. I spent the first half of my life running away from where I was from, right. and I'm spending the second half of my life running back. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. All right, we got to get out of here. Roots Music Rambler is a production of Falls and Partners, copyright 2023. Our theme music is Sheepskin and Beeswax by Gentacorum. Join us online at rootsmusicrambler.com and make sure you mash that subscribe button or the follow button so you remember to join us for the next hoedown and throwdown. She's Frank. He's Falls. And whatever you do, kids, ramble on. I, I was gonna. I know it's off. crazy. Okay. It's really. It's very. Uh, okay. I'll try to catch it. If you had some <laughs> chops, I was a big karate kid guy. I could <laughs> Mr. Catch Miyagi. It. I really did one time. I was in karate and I caught it. I caught a. Did you really? Oh yeah. I, with, I wait, with your hand or with no, chopsticks? No, with chopsticks. I swear to God. Come and, on. Yeah, no. It was a really slow. The fly was at the end of its life. But, Who cares? So, Nobody needs know. to know that part no, of the no, story. No. <laughs> We'll have more of Francesca's great conversation with Jay Gonzalez from the Drive By Truckers. This is Roots Music Rambler.
Let me do that again. Fuck. Here we go. <clears throat> we'll have more in a moment of Francesca's fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Here she goes. Oh, God. <laughs> I'll get it right. I promise. <sighs> I mean, if I don't do this, what are we going to have for blooper reels? Because we're fucking, we've got this nailed. We're perfect. So. Well, I mean, <clears throat> our blooper reels. Woo. We don't need no goddamn script. We don't need no script. Right, Trudy? Yep. Call up Trudy on the telephone. I sing that song to her all the time. And she just looks at me like, what the fuck are you doing? I can't and understand. My God. Which. My dog is looking at me all crazy right now. Come here, Sky. Sky. Sky Marie. Come here. What's up, Sky? Here, come on. Up, up. You want some beer? Come on. <laughs> oh, now she thinks it's playtime. I love what? it. Trudy Sky What's gets it, beer. 